You want to lose uh, 30 pounds in 90 days? Yeah, I bet. Who doesn't? You uh, want to do it and you want it to be extremely easy. Of course. I can do this. I can make this happen. I can even show you. But uh, the reality is, you know you and I have a feeling I know you too. But anyway, welcome to Walk Talk Vent. Let's do this. So. I wanted you guys to see this video right now. This YouTuber is named Chronically Stephanie. We're checking out a video of hers from 10 years ago. At this point in life, she is a mother of three little girls. All the girls are under five. She's a couple of months away from weight loss surgery. She's currently weighing 230 pounds. And I want you to hear a little bit about her life in just this quick little video. So here we go. Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie, and this is my very first video. Please be kind. Um, I am about two months out from gastric bypass surgery, Ruin Y. My surgery date is September 4th, 2013. Uh, my current weight is 236.6 pounds, and my highest weight is 250 pounds, and I am 5 foot 5 inches. Um, Let's see, since I'm pre-op, there isn't uh, a whole lot that I can talk about my experience other than um, what I'm doing to get ready for surgery. And a couple of the things I'm doing is, uh, one, I am trying to eat like I will after surgery. Um, I'm eating a lot of protein, um, eliminated sugars and uh, carbs where I can and I'm just trying to be really mindful of what my diet is and I'm also trying trying to get my water in and uh, I emphasize trying because I haven't been able to get all of it in in one day yet but practice makes perfect um, I haven't been really that active yet um, I have fibromyalgia, so if I seem sleepy, um, it's because I am. I don't sleep well. I am in pain a lot, so, um, if I seem kind of groggy, they call it fibro fog. That's, uh, what's going on with me. Um, I am hoping that with surgery, although it's not a guarantee, or I don't even think there's been any research on it, I'm hoping that... Um, loss of weight might help some of my fibromyalgia symptoms. Um, other things that I've got going on, I have sleep apnea, and I have GERD, I have high triglycerides. Um, all of these are really big factors in my decision to have this surgery. Another is being able to chase around my, my three little girls. They're five and under. And so I definitely need energy. Um, and I want to be able to get down on the floor with them and run around and keep up with them. I think I deserve it, and I think they deserve it too. Um, so those are my two biggest factors. I think the weight loss and feeling better about myself is an awesome side effect, but it's not one of my determining factors in deciding to get this surgery uh, although, you know, I do hope that it will help me um, with my self-esteem. Right now, at the weight I am, I feel kind of invisible um, when I go out, or at least I wish I was invisible. And so, the way you see me today is how I normally look. Um, I don't really put much effort into my appearance, um, although I used to. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm not depressed about how I look, but I definitely don't feel like 
doing anything to have people look at me or make me feel like people are looking at me because I'm, I'm not comfortable. In my mind, I am much thinner and I don't feel like my insides match my outsides, which is a really hard thing to describe. But, um, so that's just a little bit about me. Um, I hope that during the course of these videos that I can help anyone um, the way the other channels have helped me. And I really look forward to uh, reading your comments. And please. So what you found out is some interesting stuff there. Number one, she's trying to avoid sugar. She's trying to drink water. Um, she's already gone from 250 pounds at her max to the mid 230s now. My only wish is that she would have maybe tried sticking with this game plan that was probably helping her lose a couple of pounds um, because if she would have stayed with it, she probably would have continued to lose some weight. Another thing she said that was telling is that she feels invisible. Now we have some people that say, oh my God, I feel invisible and it's the worst thing in the world. But did you notice the second thing she said? Sometimes I wanna be invisible, which is so true when you feel like the oddball out there. Sometimes you just wanna be able to go with the flow and have nobody notice that you're there. But anyway, I wanted you guys to see this because the cool thing about Chronically Stephanie's channel is she has enough videos over the course of not only pre-op, but post-op, that we can kind of really see um, the effects of weight loss surgery, the reasons behind some people get it, and then what happens uh, when they regret that decision later on. So later on, we'll go over some of the reasons that she regretted it, but we're going to be able to follow Stephanie's progression throughout her weight loss uh, journey, so to speak. So I'm really uh, happy that we were able to uh, watch this together. Let's go for a walk. But remember guys, if you don't mind, visit Chronically Stephanie's channel, give her a uh, give her a subscription and give her a thumbs up on all of her videos and maybe she'll come, uh, she'll come to realize that, oh my God, my YouTube channel's flickered back to life. But anyway, let's go for a walk. Welcome to Walk Talk Vent. I'm Jesse, your host, and I bet you clicked on this thumbnail because you're interested in losing 30 pounds in 90 days. Well, the good news is I'm gonna do it for you. Well, with you, I should say. Um, before we start, uh, I wanna let you know that whenever you're thinking about doing a exercise or diet routine or something that involves your health, you should always check in with your doctor first. So. Before you do anything, make sure you consult with him or her to make sure it's the best thing for you. Um, in case he's wondering what type of routine this is, it's gonna be one where we basically walk and basically walk and basically walk some more. So we're gonna be walking every single day. Now, before you trip out about that, just know that whenever you're doing an exercise routine that involves weights, a lot of times people will say, hey, the good news is you only need to work out two to four times a week, right? Because they know if they told you to work out every day, you would want nothing to do with it. With walking, we can do it every day. And most people, when it comes to doing an exercise routine like walking, one of the things that slows them down is their time with their family or their time at work. You're no different, I'm no different. So what we're gonna do is instead of using our job as an excuse, we are actually going to uh, use our job as a catalyst for our weight loss. We are gonna lose 30 pounds in 90 days the absolute easiest way. And to show you how easy it is, we are, uh, you're gonna love the first week. The first week is your food audit. All you have to do is to keep note and, a tra and mental track, so to speak, of all the foods that you eat. So, I want you to enjoy this first week. Have you ever had a diet and exercise program where the first week you basically got to eat what you always do? That's the, the fun part with my routine. So, I wanna tell you that the last time I went to my uh, doctors, 
we set up lab work because uh, I've been gaining a lot of weight. Uh, in November, I had a surgery, a cyst removal around my tailbone. Sorry if that's TMI, but basically I was down for three months. In that three months, in which I was already a couple pounds overweight, I ended up gaining an additional 20 pounds. So yours truly is now 185 pounds, and my goal is to lose 30, so I wanna get down to 155 pounds. But here's the thing, you've only got 90 days to do this, I've only got 90 days to do this. I already took some pictures of myself with my shirt off that you'll see later. Uh, it's not very pleasant, and from the side, I actually look kind of like the pregnant man emoji. But that's neither here nor there. In addition to a food audit, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to walk around your block and take note of how much time it takes. If it takes you 12, 15 minutes to walk around your block, I want you to note that. Now, the reason I say that is we're going to be using your job to get you motivated to walking every single day. And before you trip out and want to turn off this video because you have no interest in walking every single day, just remember that uh, whenever you walk every single day, you can take a day off whenever you'd like, okay? There's a lot of freedom with this. And walking is the absolute easiest thing that you can do in the world. Even babies yearn to walk. That's why they're constantly standing up on two feet and trying to emulate the adults around them, okay? So, I want you to pretend like every day you get in your car at 8 a.m. Now, I know some of you listening are thinking that's not pretend. Every day at 8 a.m. I do get in my car and go to work. What that means is that you need to start going to work at 7.30. But at 7.30, instead of going to work, you're gonna actually well, we're gonna actually take a walk to work. We're gonna do it together. I'm gonna be the guinea pig for this. You're gonna see me literally lose weight right before your eyes, okay? And once again, because we're gonna be walking seven days a week, Jesse, I only work five days, I know, but life is seven days a week, okay? Because we're gonna be walking seven days a week, once again, I just wanna reiterate, you are allowed to take a day off whenever you'd like. But let's go back to this walking audit. A food audit is one where I want you to track every single meal you eat. I eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but I also eat brunch, and I also eat sometimes a second dinner, right? We all do this. Some of us eat snacks throughout the day, and a lot of times those snacks are unhealthy. For example, did you know that a can of soda, you know that nightly can of Coke you have with your supper? It's about 150 calories. Did you know that a half hour walk is about 150 to 200 calories burned? What's that mean? Well, it means that if we start our day a half hour early with a walk, uh, we can no longer worry about that soda that we drink. But uh, don't worry, we're gonna be getting rid of that soda too. So this is one of those interesting situations where you're gonna have a choice and uh, you're gonna quickly find out that this is the absolute easiest diet plan ever. But I've already told you, we're gonna be walking every day. We're gonna be ch charting the food that you eat and we're also gonna be charting how long it takes to go on various walks around the neighborhood. This walk that I'm on now takes me about half an hour, but we're gonna break it down into three 10 minute little walks. This first walk is gonna lead me to a park, which reminds me of, well, I shouldn't say reminds me, you have a park in your neighborhood most likely too, or a school. What I want you to do is track different uh, walking patterns that you take. For example, if you go around your block and it's 15 minutes, well, that's easy math. That means that you can go around your block twice every single day that you go to work, right? So at 7.30, the first time around the block, it's 7.45. The second time around the block, uh, it's eight o'clock and you're ready to get in your car and go to work. Exercise done for the day. Um, 
later on when we get towards day 30 and 45, which will be the halfway point of our challenge here, we might have uh, extra credit. Extra credit is where when you get home from your car ride from work, you can then walk home by taking an additional half hour walk. So earlier I told you that one half hour walk kills about 150 to 200 calories or basically a can of Coke. Two walks kills closer to 250 to 300 calories a day, which would also cover your donut, right? A donut is usually between two and 300 calories. So if you take a nice 30 minute walk before you go to work and a 30 minute walk after you go to work, all of a sudden that'll start canceling out that donut and that Coca-Cola that you have. We are coming up upon the first, we are coming up upon the first 10 minute break in our walk. So what I want you to do if you've been joining me in walking is just kind of note how far you've traveled in that first 10 minutes. Hey, you want to know something that I always note? No matter what time of day you go out, whether it's the morning, midday, or afternoon, you'll quickly notice you're the only person walking. Which is interesting, because if you go up to people and you say, hey, do you have a gym membership? There are so many people with gym memberships that don't use them. And people that don't have gym memberships, they'll usually tell you this, you've heard this before, I don't have a gym membership, but I love walking and I try to walk all the time. What does all the time mean? Two or three times a month, you know? Yeah. So in a couple of seconds, we'll be one third through with our walk, which is that easy. And I'm doing the hard part. I'm holding this camera with this selfie stick. You think this is easy holding this thing all the time? No, of course not, but I'm here for you. I'm gonna be walking every single day. Because you're walking every single day, because you can take a day off whenever you'd like, on those days that you take a day off, I think you should still watch Walk Talk Vent. You should take a mental walk with me. Your first week here, you're gonna be doing a food audit. And while I'd like you to start walking right away, if you'd like to for your first week, you can just take a mental walk with me. We're gonna be talking about things other than walking and exercise because things other than walking and exercise have led us to be overweight. I'm 185 pounds and I'm about five foot nine and a half five foot ten if you ask me and uh, the key is even though I might seem like a healthy weight to you I am pre-diabetic so before I go on any statins or anything for cholesterols or anything the doctors want us to do I want to try my my plan here because I've done this twice before but I've never done it coming off of a surgery life is funny you know you set it up you give yourself some cue cards. You, sell it, you say to yourself, I can talk for half an hour. And 10 minutes in, you've gotten rid of all your cue cards. You're done. <sighs> Taking that air. A lot of us are mouth breathers. If you're overweight, you might be one of them. You think you have allergies, and some of us do. There's no doubt about it. But what I'd like you to do is close your mouth. There's no need for you to talk to yourself. I'm the one talking to myself out here. Close your mouth. Let's breathe through our nose. In our nose, out our nose. It's kind of like the body's natural antidepressant. When you're walking indoors on a treadmill, you're not really getting the full benefit of walking, in my opinion. You bought a house in a neighborhood, or maybe you have an apartment in a certain neighborhood, and you're not taking advantage of that neighborhood if you're walking indoors. This is the best gym in the world. Fresh air, sunlight, so my skin's taking in the vitamin D. I'm a little pasty because it's the winter. I'm sure you are too. So it's always good if the sun can give us a, a little, you know, a bit of a tan, right? Not too much where we're risking skin cancer. Um, I, uh, I started gaining weight because of my surgery that I was telling you about. And one of the things that's kind of tough is now I'm in my late 40s. I'm 47 and a half. And, uh, you know, doing push-ups and sit-ups and working out and stuff is a little bit more challenging than, than it, it was maybe if we were in our 20s, right? 
but walking is something where you can literally walk for hours and, and it doesn't get any more difficult and it's really amazing if you think about it because if you took even a 10 pound little weight and put it on your in your hands and lifted that weight up and down for even 10 minutes you probably would only make it two or three minutes before you start feeling tired and by 10 minutes you would feel like your arm is just gonna fall off even if that weight was only five pounds you know but with walking there's something magical our legs were just designed to walk you can literally walk for hours without your legs really getting sore now with that being said if you have gout or knee and hip pain and stuff again consult your doctor the last thing I want you to do is to make your condition worse okay and besides this walking is only a third of what we're gonna be doing I'm also going to be introducing water to your life. It's going to be a water world for you, kid. You're going to be drinking so much water, it's ridiculous. Did you know waters have zero calories per serving? Whereas that Coca-Cola, once again, 150 calories. What's that mean, Jesse? Well, it means that if we can just ditch that soda for water, we're going to be losing weight just there, right? And Here's the third part to our exercise routine. We are also gonna be eliminating sugar from your diet. Don't worry, not every bit of sugar. I don't want you to go into the stores and start reading the back of sugar, uh, sugary items like cereals and candies. There's no need to do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get processed sugar out of our life. Now here's the cool thing. Because we're gonna be drinking water every day, because we're gonna be eliminating sugar every day, it means that when you go to a birthday party or you go out to meet your girlfriend at the bar, right? It means that you can still eat and drink whenever you want. Now, when I say whatever, whenever you want, it doesn't mean daily. It just means that because you don't eat sugar, you can eat sugar whenever you want, okay? And here's the cool thing. As you slowly but surely start to lose the first 10 pounds, the walking is going to become easier. The eating less sugar is going to become easier because you're going to start uh, start being motivated, right? And uh, drinking water is going to become easier. Some of us just don't like the taste of water, even though it's technically tasteless, right? But you're going to love the water because it's going to create a situation where in 20 to 30 days, like I said, you're going to be down five or six pounds. I didn't say that earlier. I said 10. You're going to be down closer to five or six pounds. And that might be water weight and water loss. <laughs> so you might be down nothing. This is one of those diets where a lot of the weight starts to magically actually come off right before you're done with the 90 days. Okay? The reason it's the easiest thing is because you're already walking every day you're already drinking water and you already have moments where you ditch the candy and try to be strong and use willpower and stay away from the sugars. Don't worry, I have cheat codes. These cheat codes are gonna blow your mind. You're gonna be able to lose weight so quickly and the cheat codes are gonna be things like fruit, right? Fruit has fiber in it. It goes through the body easier and for some reason, it's harder to gain weight on fruit than it is on processed sugars like Snickers bars and Kit Kat bars and donuts and ice cream. But once again, don't stress. Whenever you meet up with somebody for dinner or lunch, you can still have a piece of cake with them. You can still have a soda because you're now a walker. And I'm going to walk with you all the time. I. Uh, would love for you to have a partner that you can walk with, outside of me, of course. But here's the problems with partners that you walk with. If your partner or friend walks with you every day, then you're really basing your walk on them, believe it or not. Because when they decide to take a day off, guess what? You're going to decide to take a day off. And when you start talking politics with your friends, and they might not agree with your politics, they're not going to want to walk with you and they're gonna quit walking with you. And that's where I come in. I'm gonna be here every single day, 
You're gonna see how much weight I've lost. We're gonna have a lot of fun because I'm gonna do interviews with people in between walks, of course, but I'll share them on my walks. We're gonna find out what's irking people, what's pissing people off in this world, what's making them mad. Everybody wants to lose weight. Oh, I bet you do, but can you? This is gonna be the easiest 30 pounds that you ever lost, and I'm gonna share with you exactly how to do it because I'm gonna do it. So if anyone's skeptical out there and thinks it's a lot easier said than done, you're actually wrong. This is something I've done twice before, but I haven't done it in a couple years. I, uh, I do walk every day. I do drink water every day. I try to avoid sugar, but I'm thoroughly addicted to sugar right now as we speak. So when I say I'm trying to quit, I'm gonna be going through the same tough difficulties as you are. But I know for a fact that in order for us to get to a caloric deficit, we need to shrink down our hunger. And the only way to shrink down our hunger is to slowly but surely stop eating as much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop the bleeding with the walking. We're gonna substitute the sugary drinks for water. And that's gonna do more than just stop the bleeding. That's gonna start the recovery process. We're gonna be well hydrated and we're gonna start losing weight by doing that. And then we're gonna cut out the sugar and we're gonna see as our muscles start to burst through because um, you'd be amazed how much fat starts to dissolve off of your body when you quit eating sugar. Sugar is very addictive. And uh, right, now I, uh, right now I'm thinking about donuts as we speak. You know what's interesting? When I was, a, ooh, almost fell there. When I was 155 pounds, my hunger pangs weren't that bad. A lot of times I would wake up and skip breakfast and it was like no big deal at all, you know? But at 185 pounds, God, sometimes I wake up and my stomach is just screaming. So I want you to know if you're 200, 250, 300 or more pounds, I know that hunger pangs literally hurt. I know uh, that it's not gonna be easy to not uh, you know, eat at times or to eat less or to eat healthy. But I'm gonna show you everything that I'm eating and I urge you, again, once your doctor knows about it and approves it, I urge you to copy me in every way, shape or form. A lot of us have uh, problems with this world whether it be relationships, whether it be our family members, whether it be our job. Walking is a great mental therapy for this. And uh, we're gonna use walking to really cure a lot of our ills and we're gonna do it together. So uh, we're already 20 minutes through our walk, two thirds through of our workout. Seriously, I was able to talk with you the whole time. How easy could that be? Hey, I found a great way to hold up this selfie stick. I just kind of rested on my gut. Can you believe that? God, this gut does have some value. You can hold up your selfie stick with it. I walk every single day, but you know what? So do mailmen, and I've seen mailmen that are overweight. I mean, they don't stay for very long in their profession, but they do. Um, sometimes when we're overweight, we're not really ready to go to a gym, but I wanna share something with you. If you're walking and it starts snowing out or if it starts storming uh, or if it's too hot like it is sometimes here in Arizona or maybe uh, this time of year it's way too cold where you live, that's where it's actually nice to get a little gym membership. I uh, have a little gym membership at Planet Fitness. That's one of those places where if you work out, you know, you're surrounded by people that don't really work out. So it's kind of a nice place, I think, especially for people like us that are overweight, right? And again, I don't mean to uh, disrespect, you might be quite a bit overweight. And in my case, I'm not. But here's the thing, if I help you lose 30 pounds, so let's say you go from 230 to 200 pounds. At 200 pounds, we're not gonna stop. We're gonna keep this going. And at 200 pounds, your body is gonna be that much more efficient and that much more better capable of losing fat and gaining muscle. And by the way, this is not really a get muscular routine anyway. 
I'm almost in my 50s. You might be older than me. You might be a couple years younger. If we can get you more healthy, then you can look into weight training. And there's plenty of YouTubers out there and there's plenty of physical trainers out there that'll help you with that, no doubt about it. I'm trying to help keep you alive and put you on a path where you can um, grow old gracefully, you know? I've been walking for a long time and uh, that's one third of our, that's one third of our game plan. The other one third is drinking water. I drink water, but lately I've been drinking a lot of sweet tea. So what I've been doing this past week to prepare is I've been uh, drinking half sweet tea, half water. So it's still sweet, but not nearly as sweet. What's interesting is the uh, company that I buy my sweet tea from, by adding water, uh, I'm able to make it last twice as long. So it kind of saves money. And, you know, if you go from eating donuts and drinking Coca-Cola all the time to drinking water, you might just save some money in, this pro in the process of, you know, dieting and exercising with me too. Now, before you walk in the morning, would it be a bad idea to stretch? No, not at all. Do five or 10 minutes of stretching. But here's the cool thing. Because walking is something we do every day, you know, stretching is not necessarily that big of a deal. But if you do end up going to the gym and working out, stretch. Because wouldn't that be a bummer if you went to the gym to work out and you ended up getting injured and now you can't walk or anything and you're in the situation that I was over the last couple months where you're recovering from surgery you're gonna start eating donuts and you're gonna start eating Captain Crunch and Fruity Pebbles and before you know it you're gonna be you're gonna be losing all the positive gains that you made so if you're looking for somebody to walk with you every single day I'm gonna be here and we're basically gonna rely on Kaizen K-A-I-Z-E-N Kaizen Kaizen is baby steps when you take baby steps and you keep taking baby steps it can lead to explosive progress and a lot of positive uh, gains in your life so the first thing we're gonna do is babysit this program for you while I'm walking and I urge you to start walking from day one Technically, I'm gonna give you permission to do your food audit this week. Literally write down on paper every time you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you do what I do, which is occasionally have a brunch and occasionally have a second supper, write those down, especially if it's a consistent thing you're doing, okay? Next, while you're writing down all your meals, make sure you write down all your snacks too. So if you're having a Snicker bar, you know, once a day, you know, if you're having a donut once a day, if you're having a bag of chips with salsa, uh, you know, once a day or a little bit of chips and salsa, you're probably not having the whole bag. I hope you're not having the whole bag. But if you are, write it all down. We need to get an idea. And here's the thing. Don't do what you're thinking about doing, which is, hey, this is my last week before I take this seriously, so I'm gonna pig out. No, I need to know what you normally eat. So just eat what you normally do. And I guess you're not gonna tell me, so you need to know what you normally eat. We're gonna substitute stuff on that bad boy. And we're gonna get us both in shape real quick. The uh, thing I want you to know is that in the past when I've done this, and the last time I did it, I believe I was 42, so about five years ago, I got down to 149 pounds and I had to stop. I have a body that, uh, unless I force myself to eat, the only way to gain weight at that point is to eat sugar. So as horrible as this sounds, I guess yours truly is, I'm kind of guilty of being a yo-yo dieter. But here's the difference. You're gonna lose weight, I'm gonna lose weight, and this time, instead of yo yo back to gaining weight, you're gonna be my motivation, and you're gonna keep me on the straight and narrow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to eat more because I don't wanna be 150 pounds. I don't even wanna be 155. Ideally, I'd like to be 165, but the reason I want to get down to 155 is because if I said lose 20 pounds in 90 days, I don't think it would sound nearly as appealing. Lose 30 pounds in 90 days with me, and then on top of losing uh, the 30 pounds in 90 days, you're going to note that from day 90 to day 100, just that extra week and a half there, you're going to lose more weight. It's going to start flying off you like crazy. 
And that's when I expect to see comments, comments that say, hey, I was uh, copying your routine and I've lost 30 pounds, I've lost 40 pounds, hey, let's keep going, right? So I want you to share those comments. And if you're contemplating doing this diet with me, share those comments. And again, this first week, baby steps. Just do mental walks with me, okay? It's too cold where you live, fine, just take mental walks. But you gotta specifically do it a half hour before you go to work because with every workout routine, family, friends, and career end up being the excuse on why we quit, okay? We're gonna use our work as a catalyst for this, for this game plan we have, okay? For our diet and exercise plan. So again, let's recap, because we're almost done, believe it or not. You're gonna reach out to your doctor, make sure that he's okay with you walking daily, eating less sugar, right? And drinking more water. I have a feeling he or she will love you for this. Makes their job easier, okay? The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna walk in different directions from your home. Walk around the school, walk around the park, but you're gonna time it so you know exactly how far you can walk for a 15 minute walk. You're gonna know exactly how far you can walk for a 20 or 30 minute walk. And heck, you're gonna even know how far you can walk for a 45 or 60 minute walk. These are very important because otherwise you're gonna wake up late one day and ditch your walk. I would rather have you wake up late one day and take a 15 minute walk rather than no walk altogether, you know? So my friends, we are pretty much done with our 30 minute walk. I have timed this so that when I leave my house, I come back about 30 minutes later. Now, the time is a little bit off because uh, this was our maiden voyage, but I'm gonna see you again tomorrow. So if you're thinking about doing this, contemplating doing this, or are definitely gonna be doing this walking routine with me, go ahead and hit the uh, thumbs up button, go ahead and subscribe, and go ahead and tell your friends about this because I think we can start, we can start something special together. We're gonna lose weight, but it's not just about us, it's about others too. So thank you for joining me for Walk Talk Vent. We're gonna do more tomorrow. See you then.